this afternoon. And you may be seated. Puede tomar sus asientos en esta mañana. We are so glad that you are here today. I um, hope you enjoyed the Thanksgiving holiday and you had some food, you had some fellowship, you had some family, and hopefully you had no fights. Amen. As you know, sometimes you bring the little crazy Thea, you know, you start going and things happen. Amen. So hopefully you had a blessed time. We are so glad that you are here. Um, and we're so glad that Facebook and YouTube is live watching us and those on the replay. Thank you. Just a couple of quick announcements. You guys got me sweating, man. I was... I was you're gonna make me you're gonna make me break out to the old pop lock days man i was gonna bring out my cardboard box and get back going again amen it is great to be in the house of the lord and, and that's what we do in the house of the lord it's okay y'all used to be crazy and radical for the enemy why can't you even be more crazy and radical for Jesus Christ when you come to the house of the Lord? You know, some of you can't dance, and you went out on the dance floor back in the day, and now you're here at the church like, no, no, brother, no, sister. No, get loose, man. You know, blow off the dust. Uh, get some oil on them bones and start moving. Get up out of that grave. Jesus Christ took you out of that grave. We were all once dead in sin, but now we are alive in Christ. Amen? So I got five of you that believe that. Amen. That's all right. I'll talk to the balcony. Amen. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. Just remember, we will be starting hopefully this week on construction. As you can see, the house is packed today as it is every Sunday. Give the Lord a praise offering for that. We ain't got no wimpy punk Christians that say, oh, it's snowing. I gotta stay home. No, we got some radical believers that said snow ain't gonna stop us. And this is nothing, amen? amen. This is nothing. We're gonna get some more big time later in the year. And um, we're gonna just plow through it, amen. And, and so we're glad that you're here. But we're gonna get ready to um, knock these um, uh, sound boot down, the walls down, and hopefully this week it looks like we're going to be starting. And so once we get rolling, and I'll give you the date when we can um, officially start giving, but you can always give before for this project. But I want you to see it, I want you to enjoy it, and I want you to see the lives that are going to be impacted because I believe that as soon as we put down more chairs, more people will come. More people will come in faith. And so some of you have to see it so that you can invest in it. And, and, and so we're, we're looking around eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000 to do all the work we need to get done to get this place ready. And um, we're praising the Lord. And another thing I want to share with you, and for those of you who want to help, uh, can also help in this project. Last week, I was sharing with you something that we were working on, and so now um, we got the official okay. We're going to be doing an official press conference about it on the news on Tuesday, and we're going to be opening up the church uh, in the basement uh, for a shelter for 20 families. Uh, from Venezuela and, and the refugees. Somebody praise the Lord for that. So if you want to help out in that and volunteer or whatever, come to speak to me later. And for the next 60 days, this is a trial period. For the next 60 days, we're going to run this because we know that winter's coming. And so me, myself, and two other pastors, Grace and Peace, Pastor John, and, and Storehouse, Pastor Lou, came together and said, we got to do something. We presented a plan to the city. Uh, they've accepted it. And, and so we've added 
uh, more churches to be a part of the sheltering. And so we have Hispanic churches, we have black churches that are joining together. This is not about one color, one race. This is about the body of Christ meeting a need that's in our city. And like I said, regardless of how they got here, they're here right now. So whether, you know, whatever you stand on that part of it, I mean, they're here now. So these are lives that we can touch with, uh, with, uh, with the blood of Jesus Christ and the testimony of each and every one of you. So this is a 24-hour thing. This is, this is going 24 hours a day. There's no resting in the next 60 days. And then if we do well, we're going to be presenting them another proposal to uh, continue it and add more churches so that we can be more effective. Because what does the Bible say? He'll take the money from those who are evil and give it to the righteous. And so we'll take it in Jesus' name and do the work that God has called us to do and have the devil pay for it. All these atheists out there that are paying the taxes, thank you. Amen. You're helping us further the kingdom of God. And we thank you for that. And so we're here. We're here, you know. We're not, we're not getting money where we're going to get rich off it. We're just getting money to uh, meet the needs because um, we got to feed them. We have to house them. Um, we're going to be putting heaters downstairs. Uh, so if you want to help out, you can speak to Roger. But um, uh, in the heating area and whatever other areas, we're going to be cleaning out the basement area, sweeping. So there's, there's a lot of prep this week that's going to take place. So if you need help, uh, just um, come and speak to me and we'll put you in a place to get you ready for the preparation. And then if you want to help one day a week or a couple hours a week and just share the love of Jesus with them, you can. It's totally up to you. This is your opportunity that God is bringing them here. I mean, what easier way can it be done? Can God do it for you? He's bringing you a captive audience that has to live here. <laughs> they got nowhere else to go, and they got no one else to listen to but the body of Christ and the word of God. And so however you want to minister to them, um, just let us know, and uh, we'll schedule everything out so that everything is done properly and in order. But we want to love them, first of all. That's our number one thing. Love them, love them, love them, and show them what does a true believer look like. And so we're here for that. So God is good. Somebody praise the Lord for that. So we have this happening here in the sanctuary that's going to be in the kitchen that's going to be worked on and then we're going to lift up an offering to pay for it amen and then starting december 1st we'll have 20 families coming in to the church so we have that happening and um, we're looking pray for another thing we're we're asking we've asked toys for tots to help us with some toys for these families so let's pray that that comes through. Amen. We want them to celebrate Christmas because but every day, this, this doesn't stop because it's Christmas Day. They're, they'll be here. They'll be here on Christmas Day, Christmas Eve. They'll be here every day. And we're going to pray and, and invite them to church. I mean, they don't have to come. But if they feel the love of Jesus Christ, I believe all 20 families will fill this house. And where are we going to put them? <laughs> where are we going to put them on Sunday morning? That's why we got to get this thing done. You see, we're already looking at what God is doing when we step out in faith. When we step out in faith. And you are making this happen. And God is so good, man. God is so good. And so I'll, next thing I want to do, and then we're going to jump right in, is I want to thank our youth team, Carlitos, and the entire team that put on uh, the convention for us to get there. They worked hard. So Carlitos, God bless you and the entire team. 
of young people and young adults and married couples that stayed up with them, that drove them there, that was here at the church, uh, up all night with them. Thank you so much. You've made an impact on their lives, and I thank you. And um, he's doing a phenomenal job. He's doing a phenomenal job with the youth, and we honor Carlitos and, and his entire staff and his entire team, and we thank God that we have somebody who is young and loves the Lord and wants to invest into young people's lives. And so thank you, Carlitos, and thank you, everybody that invested. If you gave money for youth to go, if you were part of the team, you stayed with them, you drove them, whatever. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. And now I'm going to ask my wife, and we got some time that we're going to share. We're in overtime, but we're going we're gonna to share our last Sunday of question and answer. So let's give it up for my wife who's doing a phenomenal job at this. Amen. How many of you are happy there's snow? How many of you know that the snow is going to go away? Even happier, right? That's what I talk about. That's what I talk about. You know, today I, I made it purposeful. So, you know, I got to go pick up two brushes from the basement. I have them already organized. So, in case you know, the two room is mine, right? You know, you all know that my two room. So, I have it all organized. And I said, like, I'm going to brush away the snow. And it was so easy. It's all going to melt away. I love it. I love it. So pastor sent me a text stating the one question someone sent in, and then we'll ask one for the house, right? Do you want to take care of the house or the text? Do you want to take care of the text? So the text that came in, the question that came in is, how can I get involved in ministry here in Dunamis Life Church? So would you like to answer that? And then I'll, I'll piggyback off of it, but make it short. I'm the host. I'm the host. All right, go ahead. All right, great question, great question. How do you get involved in ministry here at Dunamis Life Church? Because I know we have a lot of new people and maybe some older ones that don't know how. Let me share some of the ways you can get involved. Number one, you need to speak to the leader first of that department. So for instance, if you want to get involved in the young people, um, you need to speak to Carlitos. Wave your hand, Carlitos. Well, that leads me into the next thing. So Carlitos coming up, stand up here. So as we start calling them out, yes, I'm, that would lead me. Yes, we're going to see them. They're going to get showcased. Carlitos, and he has a team too. So Carlitos, go ahead. Go on. You want me to be short? Now you're bringing up all these people. All right, we're going to bring them up. We're going to combine it, all right? We're going to combine it. So Carlitos, I'll break you, correct? Yeah, I'll break you. So if you want to get involved uh, in whatever ministry, don't come to me. Don't say, Pastor Rob, I want to get involved in this ministry. Don't do that um, because I, I'm doing a whole bunch of other things. I might just say, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I forget to tell the person who's in charge. And, and then guess who gets in trouble? Then I get yelled at. Amen. You don't get yelled at. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so whatever the ministry is, Whatever the ministry is, first of all, speak to the leader. Number two, if it's a ministry that's in the front, like singing or preaching or teaching, don't think you're just going to be here for a week and then uh, get up and start teaching or singing. That's not going to happen. We got to get to know you. You got to get to know us. We got to protect one another. Uh, to make sure that we know what you believe in, you know what we believe in, we don't know where you came from, we don't know what church you're from, and so we want you to um, be comfortable and be a part of what we're doing. And um, so that's important. So don't think it's just you. It's everybody. We're asking um, some time frame. So depending on what that ministry is, then um, that's how long it's going to take 
for you to be a part of it. Some might take a month, some might take, you know, three months, some might take a little bit longer so that we can get you involved in the ministry um, and, and we want to see the best. But if it's something like vacuuming, you can do that today. Amen. <laughs> Shoveling the snow, you can do that yesterday. Amen. Have the equipment, we have the gear, just ask some of us. So you mentioned three, pe three people, three areas, so we're going to bring them up. So if I have Diana Montes come on up to the middle, so that's worship. Um, for the prayer team, do you have an actual leader for the prayer team, the tribe? The, the prayer, prayer team. Uh, that that's kind of like me right now. Okay, him. But you have Pastor Via, who's been coming for Spanish. So come up, Pastor Via, for Friday nights, because he's mentioned the altar. So that's Pastor Via for Friday nights, um, and altar time for prayer. And then also it's a couple teachers. There's been a couple teachers. So Brother Rich, I know you do it every couple weeks, right, with the team. Yes, come on up. I know I've seen you lead. It. Yes, Brother Rich, teach. Who else has been a couple other teachers? Sister uh, Yancy. Yancy. Come on, come up, Yancy. I observe. I observe. I'm very observant. I see. Right? Any other teachers you can think of? I know I got the children's ministry team. I know I co-lead with Mike Novak. If Mike Novak, he's Mike Novak, come on up. Come on up, Mike Novak. He's my co-leader for Children's Ministry. But yeah, but what's the other... Diana guys? with the usher, Rico. She knows who she is. Diana Rico. <laughs> you know who you are. Come on up. You've been a teacher as well. Come on up. Come on up. A lead usher. There you go. A lead usher. That's it. Yes. So these are part of the ways to get involved. So that way you can see who they are. You know? And know that there's teams among them. So the, so the actual musicians or music, Pastor Rob and Diana Montes... I know Carlitos has a large team. Sound ministry or the, or the equipment ministry, who's that? Sound ministry and the, and the, and the, the sound board, Carlitos. okay, Carlitos. But he also has a team. So like I said, they, they're not lone rangers. Those, I'm not trying to single you out, but at least they have the more information that you can ask. Anyone else am I thinking of? Thinking of, who else has, who else has led with the team here? I know Sister Darlene, God bless you for your for the books that you put in. You take care. You're the treasurer holder of Dunamis Life Church. She takes care of the finances with honorability, trustworthy, and you know, counts every penny, okay? I've even found money and change on the floor, and I'd be like, Sister Darlene, I found this on the floor. I was taught by my pastor, si miras un centavito en el piso, se da a la, a la, a la iglesia. And I do, I don't pocket that. I don't need God to be like, Okay. Anyone else? Anyone um, you can think of that led? You caught me off guard with all this oh, part. Sister Anita Garcia, I know that she's been doing the women's workshop. Every, yeah, and Ana Castillo, come here for the monthly meetings. Sister Ana Castillo. Ana's sick today. Ana's sick. If you're watching us, Sister Ana Castillo, you know, you've seen her way. But Sister Anita Garcia is upstairs with the children's. So they... So this is my belief. I, I don't know about Pastor, but I know he's heard me say it. I've always believed that you should lead one and serve two. Lead one and be a servant of two. Because when you're a servant, you're humble. Let me say that. I, I've been in ministry for over 42 years, and I've seen what the word is. When my mom used it once before. Egoismo. Okay? You're not above. You're not above. You're not above. I also want to call out Araceli Lechuga, Silvia Cano, Manuel Cano, Carlos Lechuga, who also leads, come on up, come on up, Espanol, si, y ustedes los que están aquí, la que han visto, han venido aquí los martes y jueves y los estudios bíblicos, come on up, come on up, so we can see you, so we can know who you are, put a name to the face, and we say thank you, thank you, um, adelante, adelante. Yes, and then now we have a translating team. Tenemos un equipo de translating, traducir el sermón. You know, I think Pastor, you're spearheading that one too. Right now. Oh my goodness. We need to start taking things. Adelante, adelante. Araceli, come on up. This way, this way, this way. There's a lot of room over here. You're not blocking me. I don't, I'm not important. It's the body that's important. The body's was important. 
without the body, the head doesn't move as much. Yes, some people may say, you know, you need the head to be the body, but we don't move without the body. We need you. We need you, okay? Um, if you have been a volunteer or, or because nobody gets paid, I know my inheritance is in heaven. I'm sorry. I, I, amen. Yes, right? Yeah, amen. I know that. And I know at 49 years old, yes, I am 49, I still remember my Sunday school teacher says that when you serve unto the Lord and you give unto the Lord, and at my eight-year-old age, thank God for Adelpha Cardenas, okay, as she knows who she is, she would tell us, you know, when you work unto the kingdom, you're adding something to your home in your eternity. And I want mine to be all sapphires. I want mine to be pearls, you know, but we do this voluntarily. So gracias, thank you, merci, you know, danke, you know, grazie, shishi, whatever language you want to hear, thank you from muchas, let's thank them, let's thank them. Because if you come in contact with them, you come in contact with the Lord, with the Lord. So if you have any questions how to serve, this is how you can get involved. Did you want to add to anything? Well, I get to talk now? Oh, you get to talk, yes. Yes. <laughs> she just took over, man. <laughs> but no, if, if you want to get involved, we want you involved. Um, know that. We want you involved. So speak to any one of these. And that this is not just the only ministries that we have or we will ever have. We, we need more to reach the community, to reach um, the needs of the church. And so just know that there is a set of order so that we can filter and make sure that everybody is used properly. So do not feel you're being hurt. Don't be like, oh, man, I'm going to go find me another place. No, no. Don't let the devil put things in your head. You are important. We want you involved. Um, we just don't want you to talk, come to me. Amen. Oh, I see one more person, <laughs> Brother Roger. Roger, come on. Come up, because you were the first person you mentioned about helping out. Um, I know Brother Rich is handy with tools and equipment. We are Now that Pastor's talking about renovations and helping here, come on, come on, Roger, come on. I've been watching you. Yay, man, I've been watching you. I've been watching you. Yes. Man, Roger thinks he's in Miss America. He's like, he's like. So... <laughs> Honor this house. Honor this house. Respect the order of this house. When you are interested and they're telling you how to get involved, it might take them, it may take you a month. It might take you three months. It might take you six. Honor that. There's a reason for it. There's because see, when you're not just talking to Sister Araceli or, or Silvia Organo, Diane, Yancy, Ridge, Mike, Sal, Pastor Villa, Diana Montes, Carlitos, and Roger, and Pastor Rob, there's a body that's involved in discussion of your servanthood. We're not questioning that. It's a discussion. We want to put a plan of faithfulness, a plan of loyalty, a plan of humbleness, a plan of servanthood, and then you go into leadership, okay? Into leadership. I knew I was a leader at 13 years old. I knew I was going to become a leader. And, I, and because of what my sister Diana Monte was talking about, obedience, my first, my first obedience was my parents. The, the Ten Commandments still hold true. The Ten Commandments still hold true. And one of the commandments is honor thy father and thy mother so your life can be long lived. In the modern way of saying it, right? I honored my parents. So thank you, Papi. Thank you, Papi. Papi has been separated by Jesus Christ from times such as this. I thank you, Papi. So get involved. Get involved, okay? Have that urgency. You sought the Lord, right? And he heard, and that's why you trust him. He put these people before you. We Amen. got we got one more. One more, one more. Okay, who else? I don't want to get in trouble. My mother-in-law, who's in charge of the, the kitchen and all the events that take place there. Yeah, we also, my mom, she's a consejera. She's a counselor, okay? She, she you know, God uses her too. That's her strong suit. You seek after her, you admire her, you go to her. 
you know, there's a sense of practice and order, but also there's spiritual. So thank you, mom. Gracias, mom. I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> See? See? I remember. I'm on the good list. Su esposo, nada. Pero si yerno, sí. Amen. Well, this ends our, our <coughs> thank you. Thank you for coming up from your positions. Thank you for coming up during this time. Amen. Just give God all the glory and honor. Let's continue to have a servant good heart. Amen. Amen. God is so good to each and every one of us, and we thank the Lord for all that he's doing and all that he's done. And so we thank everyone who's helped out in part of what we're doing as a ministry. And we thank God that we're going to have so many more. We're going to have so many more people be a part of the ministry of what God is doing. And so thank you so much. Uh, get involved. Get involved. Make sure you are involved in the church because we do need you. Uh, there is, this is a family. This is, there's no favoritism here. We don't want to have cliques here. We want to have a family. And so we thank the Lord that you guys are part of this family. And so I just want to stress that. Uh, starting uh, 2024, you guys, we need you. In order to grow this, we're going to need a lot more people to handle the work. And like my wife was saying, you know, there are things that, that I want to let go so I can do some more of the things that God has called me to do. But if I'm busy doing these other tasks, then I can't do what God has called me to do. And um, so last thing, December 9th, don't forget, at my house from 5 to 8 p.m., everyone is invited just bring some, something to share so that we can fellowship with one another in Jesus' name. Everyone's invited. We want you to be there. We want you to be a part of that because we want to get to know you, especially all the new people. We want to get to know you. You can get to know other people. And um, outside of these four walls, outside of a Sunday morning, we want to fellowship with each and every one of you. So I pray that you come to my house. You don't know where I live. Ask myself or someone else. They don't know, then find me and ask me or my wife or, or my family. Uh, they'll let you know in Jesus' name. Amen. My voice is starting to die out from youth convention and from what God has I was screaming today, shouting, and those woo! So my voice is like raspy now. I, I lost it, but we're going to get through this. Um, we're going to hopefully try to get to the end, but our, our time is, is a little bit shorter. We're going to continue with our series and our, our sermon here in the book of Ephesians. That we all have a past. Everyone say a past. Now, we're in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Hopefully you guys should know this by now. It says, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. See, our flesh has desires that's contrary to the word of God. It has desires that is contrary to the word of God. How many of you know that? Amen? I know some of y'all don't want to agree because then you'd be like, yeah, I know. You don't want to be caught up. Because this flesh wants to do some crazy stuff. And before we came to the Lord, we probably did some crazier things even. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, tell the truth. We did some crazy things before we came to the Lord, and some of us are still doing crazy things. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Don't be acting like y'all just perfect angels. I've seen some of you drive on the street. Amen? 
I seen some of your hand signals on the street. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out, man, can you count past one? Amen. Because I was like, why do they keep showing just one finger to people? <laughs> Y'all just fill in the blanks. Amen. Let the Spirit lead you. See, when we lived in the world, our flesh wanted to do things that would open up doors to the enemy. And then we need deliverance to set us free from the demonic spirits that would enter in. See, a lot of the things, it wasn't the devil's fault that things are entering into us. We blame the devil, but it is us, our flesh, opening the doors. You see, if you open a door and a rat comes in, it's not the rat's fault. Amen? The rat just saw the door open and he saw a lot of food inside. <coughs> it ain't his fault that you left it open. And see, that's what's happening in the spirit realm. Because if we're doing what this flesh desires, we're opening up doors and rats are coming in. And then we want to come to the altar, we want to get delivered, we do it, we set you free, and then we close the door, then we lock it, and then when you go home, you go find your extra key, unlock the door, and reopen it. And then next Sunday, you're back here. Lord, I need freedom, I need deliverance. And then we do it again. And then after like the fifth, sixth time, we're like, okay now. I was born at night, but not last night. You keep coming for the same reason. And if you've been set free, because the Bible says, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. He has set you free. Stop opening the door. Let me talk to the balcony. Stop opening the door. Yeah, pastor, you're right. Amen. I'm going to do it. See, them balcony people, they get it. They get it. Stop opening the door. Don't be surprised if the robber comes in because your door is open. You can't blame the robber. That's what he does. He robs. Or else he wouldn't be called the robber. Not robber. I'm not a robber. <laughs> but if you leave cupcakes behind after service, it's mine. <laughs> See, I, I, I call people, hey, you got a coat, you got a shirt. But if you leave cake and cupcakes, I ain't calling nobody. <laughs> That's your fault. I just keep it and go home and say, God has blessed me. Amen. So we have to learn to control the desires of our flesh so that we can please God. See, this, we got to stop pleasing. I got to stop pleasing. It's a daily battle. Everyone say daily. This is a daily battle. I cannot please this, my flesh. I got to learn to please God. Do I got some people here today that want to please God? <laughs> then stop pleasing your flesh and you'll please God. If you do everything opposite this wants to do, 99.9% .9 of the time you can do the right thing. Your flesh wants to do something, just say I'll do the opposite and you'll be okay. Because this flesh wants to do what it wants to do. We have to learn to control the desires of our flesh. See, we please God through our faith. You got to have faith to please God. You got to have faith in your life. The ability to believe in what you can't see. You see, in order to start this ministry, this church here, I had to have faith because none of this existed. This was all just faith. This was all just a dream. I had to put my faith in God because I couldn't do this. 
I couldn't do what God had called me to do. You can't do what God has called you to do without faith. You need faith. Everyone say faith. You got to have it. It's important to have faith. See, the Bible tells us it is impossible to please God without faith. You can't please God if you don't have faith. And the greatest thing about it, the Bible tells us you don't need a lot. You don't need a lot. You don't need dump truck loads of faith to come on you. The Bible says the faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. So if that little bit of faith can move big mountains, man, I just need a, a little speck of faith to move my, my little mohill, my anthill in front of me. Amen. I just need a speck of faith. I don't need this dump truck load of faith. I just need a little. I won't say a little. That's all you need. And guess what? You'll please God. Many people ask me, how do I please God? Just have faith. Step out in faith. When we decided to knock this sound booth down and knock the walls down, we stepped out in faith and said, we got to do it. Things are happening. We got to do this in faith. And we got to believe that people are going to see the vision and invest in the vision. When we bought this building, look at this, just so you know how much faith that it took. We were about 15 people, 20 people at the most that were faithful to the church. And we were in a storefront building on 19th and Allport when we, when we, before we came to this place. And we were paying roughly about $1,500 a month in rent, utilities, and things of that nature. And I said, in order for God to start doing what we want to do, we got to step out in faith. We got to get out of this place. Because this place, for one, it stinks. Amen. <laughs> I mean, it was like sewer smell. Amen. Worse than here even. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, this is the city of Chicago. Come on. There's no shame in the game. It's not our fault. <laughs> We didn't put down the sewer lines, but it stunk like nasty smell. It was very small. We were on 19th and Allport. We were on the corner, right there. And I'm like, we got to get out of this place. But we had no money in the bank. It's not like... You know, 15, 20, you know, little gatitos were giving a lot of money. We were just paying our bills in faith at that time. And so we said, well, it doesn't cost us anything to look. Amen? It doesn't cost you anything to dream. See, some of you have stopped dreaming. Because you're like, well, it's not going to happen. How would this happen? You're, you're already worried about everything that can happen before you even start dreaming. You need to start dreaming. And so we started dreaming. You know, what would it be like if we didn't have a bathroom on the altar? Amen. <laughs> I'm serious. Those of you back there, my father-in-law, my Aunt Liz, she remembers Ralia, that's about the only ones left here from the original. And Mike, the bathroom was right there, like where the base amp was. And so I'm preaching, someone's got to go, they're like, and Jesus said, excuse me, Pastor, nature's calling. <laughs> and God loves you. <laughs> Not to mention the sounds that were coming out of there. <laughs> There was deliverance going on, but it wasn't from demons. <laughs> uh. 
And the only one who suffered when they opened the door was me. I'm like, good Lord, what'd you eat before church? Don't you got a bathroom at home? I'm not kidding. I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating. I wish I was. <laughs> Sometimes I can exaggerate. I'm not even exaggerating. If we could go in there, I would show you and prove it. It's right there. Yeah, plus we had a little apartment next door. So all that was about $1,500. And so I said, man, we got a dream because we got to get out of here. I would love to preach without a bathroom on my altar. And we had one. That was it. That was it. And so we saw this building here. This building was a bar, in, in case you guys didn't know. This was a straight-up bar called La Escondida. If you don't know what that means, it means the hidden one. The hiding place. They didn't know that hidden deep inside was a life-giving place. It was a place where they can come and get changed by the power of Jesus Christ. They were just holding on to it for us, for the moment. And so I saw it. And I'm like, wow. I started dreaming. And then I came in and I said, wow, a man and a woman's bathroom? Praise Jesus! <laughs> Praise the Lord! I ain't got to hear that no more. And then on top of that, a parking lot. I started doing a little praise dance. Because you guys know Chicago in the wintertime, right? I mean, all of us are from here. Those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube from warm cities, you just don't know. When it snows and they shovel it and they put a chair or, you know, their batas out there, or whatever they put out there. If you move it, you're coming home to four flat tires after service. <laughs> and so we had a fight with that. No parking, bathroom on the altar. And I see this place. I mean, it's a dump inside here too. It's a dump because they didn't care about anything else but serving liquor. They didn't care how it looked, how it smelled. They, they didn't care about anything but making money and selling liquor. But see, when I walked in, I saw it through the eyes of a dreamer. What could this place be? What could we do with a place like this? And then with a parking lot, oh, praise the Lord. I got somewhere to put my car. Praise Jesus. And so... I talked to the owner. Uh, he was going back to Mexico, and he wanted to sell it. And I shared with him my vision, my dream. And he was like, you know what? Other people have offered me money, but I want to sell it to you. And I'm like, well, how much are you offering? How much are you asking? He said, well, we're asking $900,000. That's what they started off with, $900,000. So Almost a million dollars. Yeah, that was at least 15, 20 years ago. That's what they were asking for. I'm like, uh, do you take uh, food stamps? <laughs> I may be able to raise half of it. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. And um, he was asking some more questions. And then he said, you know what? I would love for this to be a church, like you're saying. He said, what I'll do, I'll lower it 100,000. I'll ask 799,999. I mean, to me, it could have been 10 million to 9 million. I didn't have it. <laughs> didn't matter what he said, I didn't have it. But something rose up in me in faith. And I looked him straight in the eye, I shook his hand, I said, sold, brother. 
I didn't have a loan. I didn't have nothing. But I bought it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Lord, you're going to have to do something. I took a risk on faith because I saw you guys here. I saw you. I saw faces that would be coming to this place to be set free. And I said, what's money to my God? What's money? It's nothing. God, just sell a couple of those fat cows over there and, and give me the money. And so God made a way for a miraculous loan that we were able to buy this place with not one penny down. And that was unheard of, to buy a commercial building with no money down. The bank said, we've never done it before, and we'll never do it again. <laughs> but for some reason, the board of directors accepted your plan. I just wrote up a plan on a piece of paper that said, I owe you, we will pay. <laughs> No, I added a little more than that. But basically, that's what it was, because that's all it meant. What's a piece of paper with a signature that just says, I, I, I guarantee you, I'll pay you back. Some of y'all don't even trust your friends for five bucks. You know they ain't paying you back. You're like, no, nah, man, I ain't giving you five bucks. You haven't paid me back the two bucks I lent you last week. And here I am, I'm asking for $800,000 quarter of a million dollars on a signature that says we promise to pay it back. Jesus loves you. <laughs> and, and they took it. They took it. And, you know, the bank uh, was called, oh my God, what was it called? Yeah, it was, um, I think it was People's Bank? Something to that nature. I forgot the name of the bank. And so they took it. So then I came back to the church. I said, church, we bought a new building. <laughs> All 20 of them. <laughs> but you now you got to pay for it. Crickets. <laughs> I said, don't leave me hanging now. So we got the loan, we bought it, and the rest is history. I'll tell you other history another day behind this building because there's so much more. Because know that with the dream comes a fight. You got to be willing to fight. And I ain't talking, you know, ghetto style fighting in the natural. You'd be like, give me some Vaseline. Who do you want me to knock out, Pastor? <laughs> Just give me their address. I just got saved last week, so I'll repent. <laughs> Not that fight. Because I know some of you, you would go out there and fight. I'm talking about a spiritual fight. To make it to this point, and like I said, another day, another sermon, I'll share that. The fight behind it so that you know, because most of you don't know, that you're standing on a promise of God. On the faith of God. This is a mountain of faith right here. This is the faith the size of a mustard seed that moved a gigantic mountain for us to be here. So don't tell me it doesn't work. I know it does. You just got to be faithful to the Lord. See, we please God through our faith. This is why the enemy attacks your faith in God. So that you won't please him and you miss out on the blessings that God has for you and your family. See, God doesn't, God, I mean, the enemy doesn't want you to please him, please God. He wants you to miss out on every blessing. And there is so many blessings when you act in faith. So many blessings. Let me um, wrap it up right here and We'll finish it off next week. God is faithful. God is faithful. He will never let you down. He will never let you down. We went through some hard times, believe me. We went through some hard times. 
when we didn't know. So we went from just, we end, and worship team come up. $1,500 a month we were paying to now with the same amount of people who gave the same amount. <laughs> God had to step in. We went from $1,500 for all the expenses to just for the mortgage for this building right now. Just for the mortgage, it was $5,000. Just the mortgage. $1,500, $5,000. That's what I'm, I was sleeping with. Just for the mortgage, not including light, gas, insurance, renovation, and everything else that came with this. Just the mortgage alone was $5,000 a month. So that's what, $3,500 just alone right there that we just jumped. And then you add in the heat, the light, the mortgage, all the stuff, the renovations that we had at least start doing a little bit here, a little there. So we stepped out in faith. And every time we stepped out of the boat, we started walking on water. We started walking on water. Because God is faithful. See, you never walk on something unless you try. See, every other, other disciples, they stayed in the boat. But Peter did something that no one else did. Why? Because he took a risk. He, he's the one who got out of the boat. And he walked on what other people sank in. Some of you are going to get that. He walked on what other people sink in. See, other people are sinking right now. They're sinking in the waters. But we're walking because we have our faith, not in me, not in other things, not in our job, not in things of this world. We put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. And he has never let us down. That's how good my God is. So never tell me he can't do it because I know he can. I've seen too much to not believe. And by you being a part of this ministry, you're going to see a lot of things that's going to make you a believer. Even if you don't believe right now, say, Pastor, I don't know about all that stuff. I don't know about that Jesus stuff. I don't know about that deliverance stuff. I don't know. Believe me, you're going to see it come to pass in Jesus' name. And your faith is going to increase. And you're going to come, you're going to go from a doubter to a believer like that in Jesus' name. Let's all stand. I'm going to ask the tribe to come forward. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Te adoro, mi Dios. We worship you, God. You are worthy. You are worthy. We thank you, God. Because when others weren't faithful, God. You were always faithful. You love me no matter what. You did miracles. You did healings in my life. You set me free. Deliverance from every attack of the enemy. Some of you might be going through attacks of addictions. Some of you might be going through attacks of nightmares. Some of you might be going through attacks of loneliness, suicide. Some of you might just need Jesus. You never received him. See, every Sunday there's signs and wonders at this altar. 
Not because of me, not because of anyone else, but because Jesus meets us right here. And this is a sign of faith when you come up. Because some people say, well, Jesus is everywhere. Why do I got to come up? It's because you're saying to the Lord, I don't care what others think. I don't care what the enemy says. I'm coming here. This is your house. This here, the altar represents the presence of God. Seats represents being comfortable. See, a lot of us want to be comfortable and still want God to do the miracle. Every miracle calls for you to be uncomfortable. Every deliverance calls for you to be uncomfortable. This is not about being comfortable. This is about being serious with God. Saying, I know I have a past. But yet, you still love me, God. All of us have a past. That we're not proud of, but God still loves you. So if you're here today, you say, Pastor, I need prayer because I want to be set free. Whether it's salvation, whether it's deliverance, whether it's healing, sickness, whatever it may be, there's miracles here. Your miracle is waiting for you. Close your eyes. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We just pray, Holy Spirit, have your way. Let your presence flow. Let your presence flow right now. Because you are a miracle working God. And there's nothing impossible for you. Nothing is impossible for you, God. You take our past, you know our past, and yet you still want to work with us. I thank you for that, God. You know my past. You know my sins, known and hidden, yet you still love me, and yet you still use me. And so today, God, there are people here, whether on Facebook, YouTube, or here in the sanctuary, that are ready to encounter you. And I pray that you move right now in Jesus name if you need prayer come and meet our tribe members here they're going to pray with you they're going to love you they're not here to condemn you they're not here to judge you they're here to love you they're here to intercede for you whatever it is that you need deliverance, healing just make your way Make your way. Make your way. If you're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, just write miracle. Just write the word miracle. And we're going to pray for you. And believe in the miracle. In Jesus' name. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You are worthy. Just make your way. The presence of the Lord is here today. Just type in the word miracle. Hallelujah, Lord. Just type in the word miracle. Jesus, Jesus. Come, come, come. There's a miracle in the house today. Hay milagros aquí. Hay gente aquí que puede orar por ti en español. Pase. Pase. Si necesitas oración, pase. 
Vamos a orar en español. Vamos a creer en los milagros de Dios. Los milagros de Dios son sí y amén en Jesucristo. Every miracle is yes and amen in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. If you need Jesus, come. If you need salvation to surrender your life, come. Come and meet Jesus. Come and meet Jesus. Surrender your life. It's the best decision for you, for your family. Come and surrender everything to the Lord. Hallelujah. You come to set the captive free. The most beautiful. Dios vino para liberar el cautivo. Hay libertad en Jesucristo. There's freedom in Jesus. Hay libertad. Hay libertad. There's freedom. There's freedom. Hay libertad. Break every chain, God. Break every chain, God. Rompe cada cadena, Señor. For me, you do it for them, God. My beloved is the most beautiful. Hágalo, Señor. Por cada persona aquí. Hágalo, Señor, los milagros. Los milagros de Dios. The miracles of God. The miracles of God. The miracles of God. Si sientes triste, pase. Dios quiere darte el gozo. The Señor. If you feel sad, come. God wants to give you the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. El gozo del Señor es nuestra fortaleza.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we love you, God. Mi amado Te amo, mi Dios. El más bello entre millares, millares, millares. Open up the windows of heaven, God, and send your fire. Abre las ventanas del cielo, Señor, y mande su fuego. Send fire, God. Manda su fuego, mi Dios. Send the fire of God. Every demonic spirit gotta go. Cada espíritu de enemigo tiene que ir en el nombre de Jesús. You gotta go in Jesus' name. You gotta go in Jesus' name. Coraje, you gotta go. Get it to eat. You gotta go. We release every spirit of anger out of our life. Every spirit of anger has to go. Every spirit of anger has to go has to go has to go you gotta go you gotta go in Jesus name bitterness you gotta go you gotta go Bitterness, you got to go in Jesus' name. Every spirit of bitterness, go! Some of you got to go into spiritual warfare for yourself. Necesitamos entrar en la guerra espiritual para nosotros mismos. We're going to spiritual warfare for freedom. bitterness release it in Jesus name Father we pray for Gabriela Matias for protection over their marriage protection over her pregnancy and over the enemy against her bloodline. Gabriela, 
Matias, God. Touch her and her family in Jesus' name. Touch her in Jesus' name. Every attack against that family in Jesus' name has to go. Bless them, Father God. Bless them, Lord Jesus. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Father, and you turn it for good. in the mighty name of Jesus, you turn it for we good. thank you for Carmelo, Father God, for what you've you done in his life up to this point, and what you're going to do you in the future. We pray right now that the hand good. of God continue to be on Carmelo, Father God. You take Father, You've touched his body. You've healed his body. But we pray for 100% healing. 100% healing upon his body. And we know, God, you can do the miracle. You can do the impossible, God. There's nothing you cannot do. And I pray for the parents, God. Father, I pray that you cover them. Give them wisdom to raise Carmelo in the ways of the Lord. God, that you would bless this family. God, anoint this family, God. God, I pray that you send fire down over this family, Lord Jesus. God, that the miracle... What the enemy meant for evil, God, you are turning it around for good. And God, that Carmelo will be a walking miracle of the goodness of God. I pray right now, every organ in his body will align and be operating functionally properly. I thank you, Lord. That he's no longer in the hospital. But here he is in the house of God. Testifying to the miracle and the goodness of the Lord. So I pray, Lord. Every attack the enemy had on his life. Let it be destroyed. We remove it. We take it out of his bloodline. And we pray for total healing, total deliverance upon Carmelo, God. And that Lord continue working in him for your honor, for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. I just knocked out. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. Her 
For those of you who didn't know, as I was praying for the baby Carmelo, his history of what God has done in his life. He was born a preemie baby. He was born in the hospital. He's had many surgeries. And we were praying and praying as the body of Christ. And some of you remember, we asked for prayer for him, for Carmelo. And God continued to do the work. And today, he was here. As you saw, he came up, Carmelo, with the parents, with, with our cousins, Noel and Mag. And what God has done, what the doctor said would be impossible, God says all things are possible. And so we thank the Lord for the miracle of Carmelo. Carmelo Martinez, what God has done. There is nothing impossible for my God. And so we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. That's a testimony. That's a testimony. Baby Carmelo is a testimony. And he's right here in church so that you can see with your own eyes what God can do. What God can do when there are believers praying. We saw him in the hospital. We, we prayed over him and believed that God would get him out of there. And here he is today celebrating in the house of the Lord. God is good. Give the Lord a praise offering for the miracle of Carmelo. And so we thank every one of you for coming today. Invite somebody next Sunday. For those of you still praying, continue to pray. Um, later on, we're going to have a quick ceremony for a marriage of, of their brother. Um, so we're, we're just going to have that here in the sanctuary. But continue to pray. Continue to seek the Lord. We'll be in the Welcome Center. We love to meet you, greet you. Don't forget, December 9th is the fellowship at my house, 5 p.m., Love to see you there. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you safe and healthy. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Just allow the people to pray. And once they finish, we're going to just do a, a, a ceremony of a quick marriage in Jesus' name. God bless you. Love you all.